CBS Sports presents Pennzoil at the Half, sponsored by Pennzoil. Specially formulated for today's stop and go driving. Stop, go, Pennzoil. A bird's eye view of the heart of Indiana, courtesy of aerial shots provided by the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. And at halftime under the dome, our score, Florida leading North Carolina 37 to 34. And welcome to Penn's Oil at the half, everyone. I'm Greg Gumbel, along with Clark Kellogg and Coach Bobby Cremens. Something happened halfway through the first half of this game between Florida and Carolina. What was it? I really think Carolina stepped up their defense, Greg. As a result, Florida was unable to score the ball, and when they don't score, they can't press, and that allowed Carolina to make this the half-court game, which Coach talked about prior to the start of this game. I was about to say, we talked about what was going to happen. Is any of this surprising you, Bobby? One turnover from North Carolina. Brendan Haywood has made his presence known. All right, Coach. Meanwhile, earlier today, the Michigan State Spartans advanced to Monday night's game with a victory. Take a look at Mike Chappelle, the backdoor layup and the foul. Michigan State was up six. Now, watch Mateen Cleaves with the steal extend the Michigan State lead to eight early on. Wisconsin tried to come back. Mark Bershaw driving inside, cut the lead to six. But Wisconsin's Roy Boone three-point shot continued the Badger surge and cut the lead to three. It was a two-point lead at halftime for Michigan State, but they went on from halftime and knocked off the Wisconsin Badgers. Michigan State in the championship 53 to 41. And we are joined now by Tom Izzo, the head coach of the Michigan State Spartans, winners over Wisconsin. I will tell you what I said right off the bat at halftime. This was the most tentative I had ever seen a Michigan State team in the first half. Did you agree? Yeah, I really did, and yet Wisconsin almost makes you play that way. You know, I thought we were semi-aggressive beginning, and then we got into that lull, and they just kind of clamped down on you. Uh, they're a tough team to play, and uh, I make no apology about it, but I guess I'd have to say it was kind of an ugly first half, and we were part of it. Talk about what you saw that allowed you to go to Morris Peterson in the second half. He had a huge second half for you. Well, you know, we thought we had to get more movement. We had to get the ball down in the block. We had done that earlier. Hudson came through pretty good. Uh, you know, Pete said to me at halftime, hey, I think I can post him up. We have a couple plays that we run for that. Sure enough, we did it, and uh, that got him going a little bit. Tom. John Bryan's been averaging 17 points a game, two points. Was he a key factor in your defensive game plan? You know what, Bobby? He was maybe the biggest key was Charlie Bell because Charlie Bell mirrored him everywhere he went. Plus, he got eight rebounds. Didn't do much on the offensive end, but... He did, you know, like this team has done all year, he did what you need as a coach for a player to do, and that's an incredible job. He only got five shots, wow. and that might have been the difference. Coach, it was kind of a rough ball game at times out there. Will you tell our audience what you told me when you walked up here first? Well, I, I said it was, you know, we, you missed the kickoff. I said that, and, <laughs> and it, it was like the Rose Bowl, you know. I mean, it was it was a tough game, and I think both teams played physical, and uh but they are, I have a lot of respect for Dick and his team. I mean, he does it the right way, and, and, and they're very disciplined. And we've just been fortunate that I think the athletes we have maybe wore them down a little bit in the second half. We got a few fast break baskets, which is very hard to do. Well, look ahead to Monday night. We don't know who you're going to face, but you know enough about both of these teams. Talk about the matchup for Monday. Well, when I walked out of the locker room, I thought for sure we were facing Florida. I think they were up about 21 to 4 or something. But you got to give North Carolina credit. You know, we played North Carolina very early in the year. Peppers wasn't playing. Lang was a little bit hurt. Haywood wasn't the same player as he is now. I can promise you that. And Florida, I've been very impressed with their athletic ability and their depth. Coach, congratulations to you. Uh, I guess we'll see you Monday night. Thanks, Greg, Clark, Bobby. <laughs> Thank you. Coach Tom Izzo turning to auto racing in the rain-delayed Albertsons 300 Grand National Race in Fort Worth. Mark Martin was victorious. It was Martin's fourth win in five Grand National starts this year. We thank you for watching Penn's Oil at the half. One half to go in the second piece of our national championship puzzle will be in place. Jim and Billy will return to call the action for you when we continue from Indianapolis right after this. Penn's Oil at the half has been sponsored by Penn's Oil. Specially formulated for today's stop and go driving. Stop. Go. Penn's Oil. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Men's National Semi-Final Game is sponsored by Merrill Lynch, the Intel Pentium 3 processor, American Express, and by Pontiac Grand Am. All right, Billy, let's, uh, let's review some of the midterm work here. 
Well, Jim, when you take a look at what we talked about before the game, Gators in waiting. We talked about this incredible bench strength. 22 points for the University of North Carolina. Zero. That is really coming through for Florida. Billy Ball tempo, and I really don't think Billy Ball worked too well in that first half. They're almost up to the 40-point mark in points, but I felt they got out of sync somewhat for the style that they like to play. For North Carolina, the Tar Heel touches. I was talking about Haywood. He got 16 touches. He got six shots. He's got 16 points. He's already over his season average. Good job by the University of North Carolina in that respect. And Coda in charge. Terrific job here. Five assists, one turnover. And if he can get the other guys in sync with him in regard to the half-court offense, North Carolina can stay in this basketball game. Jim, one of the other things North Carolina doing very well, and they did throughout the tournament, they held their opponents 25 for 94 for three-point shooting. Today they have Florida four for 17 with that point zone. That's right about 25%. You seem like you have looks, but Florida so far hadn't been able to get them. I think really the guy taking the ball out of bounds at half court here, Miller has to go out beyond that zone and uses great range for the jump shot. They have really shocked some of the perimeter players and stars they have met in the tournament. Like Casey Jacobson of Stanford, Tony Harris of Tennessee along the way. Here's Miller with that ability to go inside and his size. And Lang fights for it. Coda comes out with the quick hands. Oh, how about that play? To Lang. Great look. He's got eyes behind his head because who knew Lang was coming? Lang grimacing right here. I wonder if he heard his shins going down the court. Haslam charge. Big and call. Haywood was hitting the head. Big call there because that could have been a third for Haywood. Well, he is grimacing now. Here is Co How does he know Lang is coming? He was looking straight ahead to his right. He had to hear him. And here is Haywood again holding his ground. He's been doing a great job both offensively and defensively. He gets hit with a knee in the back of the head. And that's what caused that uh, slight injury. Accidental. Brett Wright. And Florida. The pressure that seemed to really wreak havoc early. See what Cody did there. He went backwards to take the defensive pressure off. There's a foul on Hamilton. Billy, looking at the halftime numbers, anything else stand out? Well, obviously the bench point's a big thing. Field goal shooting percentage, again, I credit North Carolina for the way that point zone covers the three-point shot. Rebounds about even, and Haywood off to having a good day. There's the same out-of-bounds play they ran in the first half, but Haywood couldn't control the ball. That last foul was Hamilton second to Miller in the corner. Too strong on a three. Coda everywhere. And Coda thinks he may have some numbers here. Lost control of it, Lang battling. Yeah, well, the referees twice today have not called a held ball on that situation. Dupe takes middle. And there's the ball reversed. Right. And yeah. Wright had to think about it before taking it. He had the wide open shot. A player lacking confidence with his stroke. But he nailed that three-pointer. He was six for 27 in the tournament before that one. Nice patience by Forte, who yet to have, has yet to have a field goal. You never would have believed North Carolina could be in a game with, with uh, their leading score without field goal. Hey, we're doing some hard work on the inside. It's Miller on Forte. You would think that North Carolina would try to set some screens to get him going. There's a one by Lang. Forte not ready to deliver the shot. Doubled up. Good step through. Capel will drive and lays it in. Great job by Forte. Coached by the legendary Morgan Wooten. Really showing some patience there. Miller spins, no travel. He loves that reverse dribble, but Capel did a great job. Look at this behind the back pass. Forte's trip by Dupe. Let's go to Armin Katayan. Thanks, Jim. And talking to Coach Guthridge, he pointed to the turning point in that first half of the timeout he took with his team down 15 to 3, and he said gave him some kind of talking to, telling him to do what they hadn't done, what he had asked him to do before the game, which was to get the ball inside to Haywood. I asked him about Forte and just two points. He said, I'm not too concerned about that. It's going to come. What he is concerned about, as you talk about, Billy, is the fatigue factor with Coda. Back to you. Forte. Yes. 
there it goes Billy and why he is such a great scorer is he's got the medium range jumper the long jumper and he can take it to the hoop. Hamilton with a quick three in and out and that was Forte's first field goal Carolina has matched the Gators at 40. Now here's what North Carolina is doing so well. They are tempoing the game. They're not allowing Florida to get running up and down the court. This is an incredible move by them considering how they started the game, Jim, where they were completely out of sync. Forte, two straight. Carolina leads for the first time since 3-2. Lang is really hurt, and he's asking to come out of the game. Hamilton answers at the other end. And Pepper's going to have to come in for Lang. Lang is really hurting. Young man has been saddled with injury and illness for a year now, and he needs out of this game right now. Freshman defending senior. Dakota with some depth ball handling on display here. Lang, I heard a slap. Yes, you can hear it from here. Forte again, three-pointer this time. Is he patient or not? Didn't have a field goal in the first half and just taking it nice and easy. Harvey, two-point shot, bounces out. And Hamilton, oh. Harvey on the glass, keeping it alive. Oh, Harvey had a couple of chances close range. He sure did, Jim. Forte with seven points in the last minute. Lang's just going to have to stay out there. There's a foul on Harvey. He can't get to Haywood in time. Haywood's got about three, four inches on him. Tar Heels have come back from 15 down. The lead by three. And there is the king of Queens himself, Kevin James. College football player and a big golfer is uh, going to be spectating next week at Augusta. Billy Donovan, what's he trying to do here, Billy? Well, Jim, you saw he stayed out most of this time out and talked to the officials or at least tried to get their attention while Pelfrey in the huddle tried to get the attention of the team. What's happening right now for Billy? And he has got to count on, as he has all game, for this bench to come in and give the lift. Now he has one starter in the game right now, the rest are bench players. The only starter is Dupay. Carolina ball, three-point lead. Forte on fire. Oh. Again, a three-pointer. Well, wow, Dupay didn't even get a hand in Forte's face. North Carolina with its largest lead. And here's what I've wondered, Jim. Will the bench ever lose some confidence when all of a sudden the pressure's on them to really produce? I would really guard Nelson Heavy now because he's the one guy that has produced. Dupay, wild shot. Harvey's going to be called the for the back. foul. Three freshmen on the floor for Florida right now. That was, who is that foul on? It's going to be on Harvey, isn't I it? I thought so. He went over the back. Of, yep, it is going to be Harvey going over the back of Coda. How about Coda, after having been hit in the head twice in this game, goes in there and battles with Harvey. Harvey has four fouls. He's going to stay in the game. That's one thing that Donovan does have in his favor. He can afford some guys to be in foul trouble because he's got replacements. And what I think Billy Donovan is doing right now is saying, I'm going to play this game tight, and I'm going to count on, as I did in the Duke game, for North Carolina to wear out with their short bench. Peppers going up, had the ball taken away. Forte, presence of mind to go back out to Cotto. 15 on the shot clock. You notice he caught that and looked to make sure that he had the passing lane, Jim, because that'd be a dangerous pass, throwing it towards the other team's basket. Over the top, here's an opportunity to foul Harvey out. One on the shot clock, not in time. Haywood should have put that shot up, Jim, because he had Harvey on him with four fouls. Harvey is a very aggressive player, and Haywood had to know the shot clock was winding down. Harvey to the bench with the four. Haslam back in. Now Bill Guthridge over there, Jim, is going to have to consider some timeouts for rest for his team. He doesn't have the bench to go to. He's using his own. He'd like to get on the foul line more. On the baseline, Bonner will take the shot. Nice pass. Two 
seconds to spare. Coda finds the trailer. First, it's a charge call. Number three on Coda. And Coda knew that Haywood was coming, but he didn't deliver the ball until he went up in the air. The worst thing you can do coming down on the semi break is to commit yourself in the air because there's nothing you can do. Good job by Florida. That was Haslam who drew it. Coda stays on the floor with three. Lang. Bad angle and all is back. He's hobbling back into the lineup. Yeah. Now there's going to be a real gut check for the University of North Carolina now because Billy Donovan knows he's got the fresher team and he keeps that pressure on using that bench. Bounce pass. Well done to Haslam. The assist Nelson. Pick and roll against relatively no defense by North Carolina. Forte pinned in the corner. Peppers wants help. Finds Forte cutting. Middle. Pull up. And, and Dakota the comes right back out with it. Can you tell who a senior leader on the floor might be? Good idea because he wants to control tempo in this game, Jim. He could have put up a shot inside. Peppers fade away and spins out. Nice. Lang right back with the hook. And that is his shot. Great turnaround half hook. I think the most dangerous player right now for North Carolina is Nelson. Comes off the screen, drives in outside. Will this be Coda's fourth? As I said, Nelson is the most dangerous player. I almost think against this lineup, Jim. Yeah, that's it four. Is Coda's that's four. four. What a moment this is. And, and, is to go boxing one on Nelson. He has so much confidence, and he has that throughout the course of this tournament. Coda's saying, hey, me? I, that's called on. That was mine? Yep. He, now, knows, he knows how precarious this situation is uh, now. Bill Guthrie just got to get Coda out of the ball game. He's, he's still on the floor with four. He's got to come in with Newby now. Can't take the chance. Parker from the corner. Oh. And still no one ready to check in for I, Carolina. With, with the lead, I think he should steal some minutes with Coda on the bench, not only because of foul trouble, but to get him rested down the stretch drive and just hope that he can save some minutes here. Forte has it stripped away. 13 minutes to go, and the Tar Heel floor general stays on the floor with four fouls. And there's that solid screen for Nelson. Nelson. As I said, Jim, he's the most shot. dangerous man on the floor right now. Well, Coda's defenseless with the four. I, I, I really think that Coda should be on the bench now. Down six, it's been reduced to two. Mike Miller will be checking in on the next whistle. Good job by Parker on Forte. Eight on the shot clock, so Forte takes it. That was a tired shot, wasn't it? Indeed, Nelson surveys. Coda has to let him go right by Art Nelson. And the lay in ties the game. Haslam. Nelson is amazing. Timeout, Carolina. Coda had to wave Nelson right by. Absolutely. Assist. See, so you can steal minutes now. At least Newby can pick up fouls. Will Coda rest? Or will he stay on the floor? He's going to stay on the floor. Big gamble by North Carolina, Jim. I think when you have the lead in this, or, or in case they're tied right now, you try to steal some minutes with Newby. Because Coda is matched up, there's his mom, but Coda is matched up with Nelson, who is really the guy taking over this game right now. So he's going to be challenged on the defensive end as well as his responsibility in the offensive end. Mother Cecilia looked pretty nervous about those four fouls and the whole situation, too. Oh, they're caught. Yep. Gator ball. One looked like it was going to be a foul, one official called it a walk. All of a sudden, because of Billy Donovan's confidence in this bench, he's gotten back to Billy Ball. Spin move, Haslam. Could have given him the lead back. This Florida is so much fresher. They're getting every a little push ball. underneath and a technical. Forte and it, Parker. It, it, I think it's going to be a double. I think it's going to be a double. So, Forte and Parker. And this might help North Carolina a little bit. It stops the action, lets them get a breather. It's like an extra timeout. Yep. John Cal 
made the call. But again, Florida can almost not get in foul trouble. They've got such depth. We'll see it right here. Ooh, that was Forte. Now there must have been some words spoken, but Forte delivered the first blow there. Parker says, "What me yeah, too?" Yeah, how about it? Oh, that, that had to be. To that had, I'll tell you, that had to be verbal coming, then the retaliation, which never should take place. Forte should be cooler than that. And then you see Wright getting in a few words, and the freshman just turns and walks away, which was the smart thing to do. See Jody Sylvester walking away there. The one official. This will be the final game he officiates. One of the best ever. Jody Sylvester talking to Billy Donovan. And you go way back with with right. Jody. We're in from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. We're from the same hometown, and um, guys like Hal Grossman and Stevie Hanzo and Jimmy Hernjack from up in the Lehigh Valley, who were great officials prior to Jody's time. His father was my junior high school coach, Danny Sylvester, one of the great guys ever in my life. While they sort it out, we'll take a break. Jim Nance, Billy Packer, a moment ago, an exchange here on Sportsmanlike Technical, a forearm shove from Forte, and watch the right side of your screen. Forte and Parker each hit with the unsportsmanlike technical, so no free throws. It goes to the arrow, which means Carolina has it. Now here's what is so tough for Cody. When you're on the offensive end, he's got to be careful not to dribble into the lane now, which is his most serious weapon because of drawing the charge. On defense, he's up against Nelson, who's a great penetrator, so takes away a lot of Coda's game. Forget about fatigue now. He's got strategy he has to worry about. Capel, three-pointer. He likes that shot. Had a good follow-through. And they have switched. Yep, they've got Forte on Nelson. Right, which means Parker over there on Coda. Now Parker is strong enough to take Coda down inside, but does Florida have that in their arsenal as far as part of the half-court set? Here he is, Parker. I'm sure Florida knows exactly the position Coda's in, and there it is. Parker, there in the screen, which Coda could not really get too aggressive trying to fight off the screen. And Jim, that's why I'm saying that it beat in Carolina's best interest now to put Coda down for a while because Florida's going to take advantage of him. That three gives him the lead. And a reach in on right. No, 10 second count. 10 second backcourt violation. Great job by Florida and that bench and their coach for having the confidence to let the game play out and still stay with his substitution pattern. It's an 11 2 stretch right now for Billy Donovan's Gators. We're down 48 42. North Carolina goes to the zone, back to the point zone again. High screens against Cota, who can't fight over the Again, and Nelson takes advantage. And he, see, he is a real detriment to them on defense. Cota has to be careful here, so he pulls back. Do it on the double. Cota whips it back over. Lang couldn't handle it. Down to 15 seconds. There's the shot they want, and Forte has it from three. Boy, he really has a smooth release. Always squared up to the basket. Remember Dick Bennett telling us yesterday, you've got to plant your feet first. Forte's feet are planted before he catches the ball. That's why he's always squared up. As is another one. This is just uh, target practice for Nelson. Ed Cota looks up at the sky saying, I'm kind of helpless. I can't get out and really play him defensively. Another 10-second call could happen here. Coda got up cross with about a second to spare. Phil Ford off his feet to go over there on the North Carolina bench. Despite his hip, I think he wants to come into the game, Jim. <laughs> Pretty fair point guard. Fourth foul on Haslam. Carolina, when it's out of the hands of Coda, has been careless. Well, not only careless, Florida has just such a great team with those double teams. You've got to be an extraordinary ball handler to get away from him, and Kota has been able to do it, but he is really hampered now with the four fouls. Haywood will shoot two. He is the 
player who really set the NCAA tournament pace for the Tar Heels with his 28 points, 15 rebounds, round one against Missouri. This is a team when it left for the NCAAs, they were told by fans and media to pack light, but they have now repacked twice, and they're trying to extend their stay in Indianapolis until Monday night. Just think of this young man in six previous NCAA games, he had had seven points prior to this year. So you can see how he has not let that bother him. Nelson, nice shot. And underneath it's Capel. Capel has to be careful. Nelson's coming. For Tay drives. Haywood battles. Out it goes to Nelson. Coda's back trying to defend. Dupay. And Miller. Block called on Capel. Sunday, 60 minutes. Meet the young beauty who grew up to become Queen Rania of Jordan and the troubled teenager who grew up to become Eric Clapton. That's Sunday on 60 minutes. Jason Capel with his third. Jim, I see some of the same looks on the North Carolina faces right now that we have seen on teams previous to play against Florida, with the exception of Butler, the team right here from yep. town, that they're just exhausted and wondering when are these new waves going to get out of the ballgame? Everybody seems to be coming in fresh. Same kind of loop look you saw on Duke. Absolutely. Sweet 16. Miller. And he has not had a good shooting day. Two for 10, two for 11 make that. He's had kind of a feast and famine tournament. Pushed on Capel, lost control of it. Miller retrieved and was bumped. And that's four now on Capel. Four Capel, four Coda. Max Owens going to probably come in a ball game yeah, now for, uh, and probably for Capel. And they're going to leave Coda out on the floor. Capel. Well, his brother, Jeff Capel. The only other time Florida was in the Final Four, they had to go against a Capel, Jeff. And now they go against his younger brother, Jason. We were talking about how unusual it is to have a pair of brothers. There's Jeff, former Duke star, play in the Final Four for different schools, and you pulled one out. Yeah, that was Al McGuire and his brother, Dick. Dick was in the Navy program and went up to Dartmouth uh, and played actually against his alma mater for Dartmouth. Miller, three-point shot again. Really struggling here. As we approach eight minutes, four-point game for the Gators. Miller was two for nine against Duke. So he has had some really good games shooting and some not so good. Owens has been a pretty good player in NCAA tournament play, but isn't coming in this game with a lot of confidence. It's a good move by North Carolina. Start using some clock here. Try to rest up a bit. Capel over Bonner, tough shot, and Harvey's back in with four fouls of his own. You know, I thought Capel would be coming, I mean, uh, Max Owens would be coming in for Capel, but it turned out he came in for Forte. Haywood says, get that out of here. Bonner from behind, knocks it loose, and Hamilton and the Gators have a three-on-one. Harvey spins out, Miller on the tip. Back out to Bonner. You see, Capel couldn't even get down court. And now Miller converts. Capel totally exhausted. Oh, but touch the line. Florida ball. Capel can't even bend over. He is exhausted. The fatigue factor is kicking in. And the Gators are up by six. Ten players have scored for the Gators. Again, the sub-stars, 34 to nothing. And Billy, another uh, nugget here. Turnovers in the second half. Florida turned it over on the first trip of the half. Not again. Meanwhile, uh, North Carolina, ten turnovers in the second half alone. Well, a couple of those things, uh, I would have to say, due to fatigue. This North Carolina team is exhausted right now. We saw Capel not even be able to go ahead and bend over. He's going to sit down right now. Coda on the floor with double trouble. Not only fatigue, but the four fouls that he has on him has really taken away his game the last four or five minutes. Florida ball, six-point lead. They were down six in this half. 
Forte back in there. Peppers and Owens off the bench. They have got to now not just get some minutes. They have got to be productive for North Carolina. Nice move by Dupe. Very quick to the basket. But again, you see what Florida's doing. This is a great job. They're going right at Coda, making him guard somebody, and he cannot afford to pick up that foul. Dupe makes them pay, and that's his first field goal. I would say that 10 points have been scored by Coda's man or the man in his area since he got that fourth foul, Jim. Over the top, they go. Haywood. Owens has to take it. Good hustle by Peppers, and he gets fouled by Bonner. All right, Peppers is some athlete. Freshman so all America, freshman all American football started every game for the North Carolina football team this year. Jim in high school, he was a tailback, scored 38 touchdowns, and uh, started the triple jump. We'll see him in football. Hey, wait a second, that's my. Sorry about that. <laughs> Sorry about Don't show that. a Wake Forest sack. And it's interesting to watch as he uh, now steps to the line, how he's able to transfer some of those football lineman skills, swim moves, and quick jumps to the basketball floor, but a costly front end miss on a 1-1. Dupe over here with Coda. Action inside, and that's going to be Haywood's. It could have been Harvey's fifth, but this one's going to be Haywood's. And that will put him in a 1-1. One one. When you get tired, you start to reach. Your feet don't move quite as quickly, and you try to play defense with your hands instead of your feet, and that's when you pick up the cheap fouls. Billy, that's only the sixth. And make that six. Next one will be 1-1. One one. Dupe rattles out. And again, you see the open look with Coda Gardner. Owen slashes in. Coda gives it up to Peppers for the jam. North Carolina doesn't want to go away, but Florida is sensing right now that they're in control of the game, and Billy Donovan has key guys over there on the bench. Harvey and a reach in on Forte. Nice piece of officiating there, because Forte's display could have been a tee. Too big a game to call one on that, and the official will go over and talk to him. Now it'll be a one and one That Pepper's slam was the uh, first production as far as uh, points from the bench. North Carolina. Harvey, one and one. Harvey, one. Talked about in the first game. Uh, Hudson, former high school quarterback, and so too was Harvey, option quarterback, but gave it up uh, <laughs> after a while. Can you imagine? It was his, to try to stop. his option whether he'd let you tackle him or not. That was what his option was. I guarantee you, bringing him down. Got such huge hands. It's amazing he can shoot those free throws. I mean, he just engulfs the basketball kind of like it's about the size of a volleyball. Opening up an eight point lead. And with Harvey having five fouls, I think they should go to Haywood. See if they can get him out of there. They need to get Haywood back in the structure. Can't take this much time off the clock. It's been a 24 to 8 stretch for the Gators. When months down in this game. There it is. In, into Haywood. Good move. Take a look at the uh, CBS Sports Line stat of the game. And the Florida bench, 36 of the 64 points. Complete stats after the game, cbs.sportsline.com. Now, Jim, remember the Kentucky team of 96. So deep with, you know, 10, 12 quality players. A lot of times you'll have a bench and they can come in and let's say play defense or they can come in and give you quality minutes, but they can't come in and give you production offensively. That's the difference between this bench that Florida has, very similar to what Kentucky had in 96. They come in and kill you with offense. Two misses by Haywood. Actually one of two. Coda with the steal. Dupe telegraphed the pass. Forte, this is a huge shot. Three, no. Harvey with that rebound and why it's so important for North Carolina to go inside, try to get him off the floor, because he can really rebound and loves to. Carolina's already come back in this tournament against one SEC team. That was Tennessee. Down nine in that game. 
in the second half late. Lead pass, and Harvey wasn't quite there. Set play. Again, I believe in North Carolina, you get that ball down to Haywood, try to get Harvey out of there. Of course, Haslam can come in, and it's not like they fall off when he does. They're double teaming, and Wright's trying to help. Owen's got it back. And Harvey. Perfect judgment and timing by Harvey. He loves to rebound, Jimmy. He understands technique. And as John Wooden always says, assume every shot should be missed. And that's what makes him such a good rebounder. He assumes that, and then he goes and gets it. Great anticipation. Over the top to Miller. Thought about giving it up. Haywood stops him. And a tie up the arrow to the Gators. Miller probably should have passed that ball to Harvey, who could have come in with a dunk. Time out on the floor. Florida ball up seven when we come back. Florida ball, seven-point lead. Billy? Well, Jim, just as we saw in the first game, Wisconsin, because of the way they play, was unable to come back against Michigan State. North Carolina right now would have to be in a press position because they've got to go out and defensively challenge Florida, get some stops here. It's very difficult to do as tired as they are, particularly with your lead guy, Ed Cota, with four fouls on him. After that blockbuster first half by Haywood, he has not taken a shot in this half. Well, we talked about Haywood touches the start of this game. They got him in the first half, has it in the second half, and it really shows. They're in the zone. Haslam outside, nine-point lead. Beautiful passing by Florida. Just dissected the point zone. Capel has had trouble against this press. Fine Forte. He'll come in. You never notice how Dupay never worries about having to foul out. But anytime a guy drives on him, he attacks the, the dribbler. I mean, he doesn't go for the block. He goes for the attack. Making sure that guy doesn't get on the line. This time, Forte, too good an offensive player to stop. That's the second and the tenth team. It's double bonus the rest of the way. First freshman to ever lead North Carolina in scoring. The ACC Freshman of the Year will shoot one more. Other Carolina freshmen will win that honor. Sam Perkins, Michael Jordan, J.R. Reed, Ed Coda. ACC Freshman of the Year. And he broke Sam Perkins' all-time freshman scoring record. And you can see what fatigue does. Even the great shooters get tired, don't have the lift, and it gets to them. We saw that in the Duke game, and now we're seeing it in this game. Again, I'm going to go back to Butler, Jim. They gave Florida the toughest game they had. So far. Actually should not have lost that ball game. They're in perfect position to win it. Six on the shot clock. Nelson. He Dribbles looks up. free. Watch this. Capel with the rebound. Yes, the Gators nearly fell victim to a St. Patrick's Day massacre. New Winston-Salem before Miller hit the biggest shot in Gator history. And look at this. Three-point opportunity for Haywood. Great job by North Carolina to look inside of the big guy. And like you said, he hadn't touched it. When he does, he's productive. That's his first field goal in over 20 minutes on the game clock. At 16 at halftime. And now, as I said again, Florida cannot get in foul trouble. You see who's coming back in, a man with four fouls. Harvey. Are they missing big free throws? Huge. That's three in a row. Nelson wanted to take a little time off the clock. North Carolina too tired to chase. But they've got to get stops. And Florida understands that. It's a young team, but they play very smart. Using a lot of clock. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Haslam wants the ball inside with uh, Haywood on him. And rejected. But in comes Wright. And Wright with the anticipation well, came Hay after the uh, Haywood rejection. It was a foul on Haywood, but really not his fault. He made the great block, but tried to go back and cover another man who was, had the good angle on him, and that's why he picked up the foul. His fourth. Four Carolina starters now with two minutes, 12 seconds to play with four fouls. And you notice Lang over there on the bench not in foul trouble, and I think that ankle is to a position that he really can't get back out on the floor. So North Carolina really uh, in bad shape in regard to what they can do with their bench. 
The first player to ever commit to Billy Donovan and Florida will shoot one more. The coach promised him he would get the players in after him to win a championship before his career at Florida was over. And they are now a little more than two minutes away from perhaps closing this one out and playing for the championship Monday night in his junior year. Now, Billy Donovan was denied an opportunity for the championship game when he finished up his career at Providence, getting knocked off in this very game, having played such a sensational NCAA tournament, winning the MVP of his region. But he's in a good position right now. Dakota, tough shot, all there. And it was not touched by Nelson, Florida ball. Dakota would much rather penetrate and kick out. But again, those four fouls have taken his game away from him completely. And that bench, that revolving door, and the, the guys in the blue shirts saying, how many people are over there in white shirts? Peppers jumps in quickly. Peppers. Harvey out for Florida and Haywood. I, think, I don't think Harvey wanted to come out of this ball game. I think he relished the opportunity of getting in there and banging some more on the boards. But Haslam, a much better passer and catcher of the ball, so Billy Donovan wants ball handlers on the floor. Hey, oh, he lost control of it. Capel looking for help. Timeout, all time. He had no place to go on his knees, Jim. He couldn't pivot. He stood up yeah. and a traveling. Don't count the Tar Heels out yet. North Carolina ball with 1.43 to go. Jim, coming into this Final Four, you had Wisconsin that won a national championship in 41. Michigan State had won one in 79. North Carolina won one in 57 with a triple overtime win in Kansas, 82 and 93. But, but one school yeah, that one had not school. won one is the University of Florida. And they are in a position now to certainly find out what it feels like to play for one. Michigan State, by the way, lost to North Carolina in the semifinals back in 1957 in a triple overtime. So North Carolina won two games that year in the Final Four, both in triple overtime. Forte takes the quick three, and Miller secures it for Florida. Wright's made some nice judgments since he's coming to the ball game as the ball handler. And Billy Dunvin wants a timeout just to get his guys in sync as to what they're trying to accomplish here. They've got enough points. They want to use the clock. Can you imagine the emotions in this tournament for Billy Guthridge? His team made the Final Four Sunday in Austin. Monday, he flew back to his home of Carson, Kansas, where his mother was laid to rest. She was 96, but uh, he said it was a blessing. She was blind her last six years, suffering from Alzheimer's, and he says, I don't think she ever knew that I was a head coach. We told her, but we don't think she ever knew. 30 years he had served as Dean's assistant, and he's had a Final Four second time in three years. But uh, Carolina's had a real struggle trying to get past the semifinal round in recent years, Billy. They really have. They won in 93, but since that time have not been able to get by the opening round of a Final Four. And been Indianapolis in has been particularly gruesome for them, for the Tar Heels. Lost here when the Final Four came to Indy in 91. Kansas beat them. 97, a loss to Arizona. The last team to beat North Carolina, this four-game win streak through the tournament, was Wake Forest, which ended up going on and winning the NIT championship. That's right. North Carolina, you know, you think about Duke having and, and Kentucky having these Final Four appearances. North Carolina, in the last ten years, has been to it six times. One and one, Miller. Miller has not shot well today, but... Uh, Always his presence out there offensively scares you. Six times in the last 10 years and only once getting past this this game over this hump. And that was in 93. Uh, Went on to win the championship. You got to be thinking all threes now if you're North Carolina. And Florida understands that. You can see Parker out on Forte not letting him get anything off. Owens. Oh. One minute. And again, with the fatigue, the jump shots are off. Coda with another one. 
And then Cota spins it over to Forte. 48 seconds. Well, this is the only strategy you can have is just hope some of those hit. That Florida, Florida ball. Back. Billy Guthrie, too. Like Billy Donovan was uh, on a team that went to a Final Four as a player. He didn't get in the game for Kansas, Kansas State. State. Kansas State for Guthridge in 58. Billy Donovan was a most outstanding player of a regional, taking Providence in 87. Experiencing this Final Four, Dakota at last steps out. Jim, the owner did pick up that fifth foul, Billy. And now you think of Ed Cota, one of only seven Carolina players to go to three Final Fours. Jim, the only man in the history of college basketball with 1,000 points, 1,000 assists, and 500 rebounds. So he leaves his uh, intercollegiate career with uh, something that'll be hard to catch. Think back to a Brooklyn Park, the corner of Albany and East New York Avenue, not officially named such, but known by all as Eddie Park because he spent so much time there he said he owned the place and the one thing he wanted to own before he left North Carolina was a national championship set all kinds of records with assists mother realizes that uh, his son will not get the ring but up until that fourth foul that fourth foul he was having an incredible night here. Oh, he's coming back in a game newbie was spelling him for just a moment well, and we, we deserve to give him a tribute anyway. Even though he came back, it wasn't his last appearance, but uh, an encore. Sens sensational player. Here's Coda. See if he can make one. Remember how at the end of the Duke game, it's a tighter situation, and Florida went zone, and Duke's legs so tired, nothing the launch of the jump shot. It's a little different now, I think, in terms of North Carolina. I don't think it's the legs as much as the fact that they're just taking desperation shots. In that Duke game, uh, Jim, as a matter of fact, Duke was three for 19 from three for the game. Capel fouls out there, Billy. Melendez comes in for him. We're going to have a five seed in the final for the first time ever. Miller will shoot two. And this Florida club hurts some top uh, offensive player. Desmond Mason, you remember from uh, Oklahoma State, a great offensive player, was two for eight, only nine points against this wave of, after wave of uh, Florida defenders. Well, on January 1, the first day of the century, Florida and Michigan State met in the Citrus Bowl. Won by Florida, 37-34 on a field goal with no time left. Tom Izzo. Well, he thought the, day, actually, the game today was football. Actually, so. it was won by Michigan State, and Tom Izzo was there to support him. And now here on April 1, they're going to set up the matchup for the national championship. Look at Harvey with that rebounding technique. Boy, he goes after that ball. You can't help but keep thinking back about this moment, Billy. 83% free throw shooter on the line. Duque to Miller, and Florida wins. And without that, they are home in Gainesville in the first day of the tournament. If they win Monday night, will that become the Tyus Edney? Length of the court buzzer beater over Missouri that became the defining moment of the Bruins championship team of 95? Absolutely. Now Coda makes the exit. Subs in for North Carolina. Kenny White comes in. Will Johnson and you, Jim Everett, Matt Wyskowski. And Jim, you can just see the difference between the depth of Florida and a team even as high profile as North Carolina. And that was what has brought Billy Donovan's team to the championship game. Jonathan Holmes also seeing action. Now, will the veterans of Michigan State be able to conquer that depth? Swat that out of here with two seconds to go. 
Harvey almost sent that all the way back to midcourt. Well, remember at Oklahoma State, he did it with an offensive dunk. Here he does it with a defensive swat. The final game is now set. It will be the Florida Gators against the Michigan State Spartans. After 62 games, all that remains, Michigan State and Florida. Big Ten against SEC. The Flintstones against Florida for the national championship Monday night in Indianapolis. We'll return to the side of the final four with Greg Gumbel in just a moment. Back in Indianapolis, our final score of the second semifinal game here this evening, Florida over North Carolina by a 71-59 count. That brings Florida into the championship game on Monday night against Michigan State. We remind you coming up next here on CBS once we sign off, Kevin James stars as the King of Queens. That's coming up next here on CBS. Let's go back down to the court. Jim Nance and Billy Packer. Jim. Well, these young and talented Gators are saying one more game. One more game. And this game today, Coach Billy D, was something that we just, well, we loved watching it, but it was back and forth, a lot of different changes in the game, swings in the game. What made the difference? Well, I thought our, our guys came out with great intensity to start the game, and then I thought that Carolina switched her defense a little bit. We took some quick, ill-advised shots, and the other thing we did is we fouled too much, which put them to the free throw line. But uh, they came out, Carolina played great to start the second half. I thought about midway through, about 10-minute mark, we started to maybe wear them down a little bit and uh, made some shots. We kind of were able to take the lead. So it was a great win. I'm just proud of the kids to be able to get to this point, um, you know, right now in the season. It's unbelievable. And your bench was sensational again. Billy, you got the senior over there. Right? Mr. Senior over here, how about talking about all these rookies you got on this ball club? Did you ever expect when you left North Carolina to go down to Florida that this is going to be the kind of team you'd have? Oh, yeah. You know, the Coach Diamond did a great job of, of bringing players in this year. And, you know, they came around big time for us, and they stepped up today. And I think everybody just played a great game. Mr. Nance over there jinx on those foul shots. What do you think about my partner? Uh, next game, he can't be talking about me over there. So I can hear him. <laughs> hey, guys, you got one Monday. more game. Do you have it in you? Yeah. All right. No doubt. The Gators will be here Monday night playing for the national championship. And we'll continue in Indianapolis in a moment. What's up, baby? What's up, baby? We welcome you back to Indianapolis, where Florida has defeated North Carolina by a score of 71-59. The fine aerial shots this evening provided by the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. Our Chevy MVPs of the game, Brendan Haywood for North Carolina, an outstanding 20.12 rebound effort, and Brett Nelson for the Florida Gators with 13 points and six rebounds. Let's check in with Armin Katayan. Armin. Thanks, Greg. Coach Guthridge, a uh, tremendous effort in the second half to take the lead, and it just appeared that Florida's depth was a difference down the stretch. I think that was a factor, uh, and we want to congratulate Florida on a great win. Billy Donovan's done a great job. I'm really proud of our players. I thought they really battled, and they gave their all, but I think we did wear out there. Uh, we were a sign when you're missing, missing some free throws in there, but uh, uh, this, uh, this team gave us a great ride to get here, and uh, I couldn't be proud of a, a group of young men. They really held their heads high all year and uh, came back out of a lot of adversity. We certainly wish we could have gotten this one tonight, but we salute Florida. Tell me about the decision to play Ed Cota with 13-15 to play and four fouls. Were you concerned him becoming a defensive liability? Well, I was concerned about it, but, uh, but we have to have Ed in there. And, uh, and he didn't get in foul trouble. And he may maybe cost us a, a, a basket defensively, but... Uh, it was on the offensive end. We couldn't seem to, to, to get anything going there down the stretch after we took that lead. All right, Coach. Congratulations on a very successful season. Greg, back to you. All right, Armin. Thanks very much. And our congratulations to the North Carolina Tar Heels and Coach Bill Cuthridge. Back to Indianapolis after this. 
Back in Indianapolis, we remind you that once we wind down here at the RCA Dome, Kevin James stars in the King of Queens that comes up next here on CBS. Our final score tonight, the Florida Gators advance to Monday night's championship game with a 71-59 victory over North Carolina. I'm joined once again by Clark Kellogg and Bobby Kermans. What did we just see out there? Pretty good display. Exactly, Greg. When you look at Florida, you have to talk about their depth. Because of that depth, they're able to stay fresh and determined for 40 minutes of attacking basketball, and they typically find the law in the opposition's game which allows them to spurt away and that's what happened. Bobby? Greg, they, they hung tough in the zone but then Dupay, Nelson, they stepped up, they started hitting the threes, it was all over. All right, one final time out here and then we'll come back to wrap things up from the RCA Dome here in Indianapolis in just a moment. ahead this evening. Stay tuned for a special Saturday night edition of The King of Queens starring Kevin James and Leah Remini. That's coming up next here on CBS. Tomorrow we'll be with you noon Eastern time with the Solomon Smith Barney Player of the Year show and then at 1230 Eastern the Compact Final Two show. And of course it all leads up to Monday night, April the 3rd, prelude to a championship at 9 o'clock Eastern time and then the national championship game between Florida and Michigan State. The Spartans and the Gators come up winners here. What do you expect Monday night? Well I'm looking for an up-tempo game and I really think Michigan State will enjoy the fact that Florida will make them play a high octane game if they handle the ball look for Michigan State to cut the nets down Bobby we should have a good as national championship game as we ever had Greg I love these two teams all right thank you folks for all of us we thank you very much for joining us I'm Greg Gumbel for Clark Kellogg and Bobby Kremens thanks for being with us and we'll see you again as the weekend continues on the road to the final four